Hey guys, Frontwoods Farmer here. A little different of an episode. What we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be restoring an old Shore Edge knife from the Robinson Knife Company. Uh, look them up, they're really old production knives. If you can see that, it's actually blacksmith. It's a hammered out finished, uh, just steel knife. This knife here is probably from around 1920, 1910, possibly as early as 1880s. I'm thinking it's a later model, like a 1910 or 20. It could be up to the 30s. What we're gonna do is a light restoration today. We're not really gonna do much to the handle. It's Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. We're doing this as just a short video. I figure I'll give you guys something because with the holiday, use this carving knife today. And when I do these knife restorations, I like to go to like a 3000 grit, but I'm doing this uh, like an inexpensive way to sharpen and you know just refinish an old knife like this that's kind of gross just need a burlo pad sponge some ajax or any kind of degreasing uh, dish dish soap uh, this is automotive sandpaper but it's as it's as hard as a 320 grit so it's pretty rough you know if your knife's in real bad shape which we might start with a four i'm not sure we're just going to just keep stepping it up and we're going to wet sand the whole time so we'll go from a 320 to a 400 to a 6 to an 8. I like to finish off with about a two or 3,000 grit. But for this knife, it's all hammered out. We're not too worried about it. I think it'll turn out half decent today. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification next to the subscribe button. You'll get all my new videos. If you like farming and homesteading, some are, you know, working on stuff. We do blacksmithing here too just subscribe. If you're already subscribed and you're not seeing all my videos, it's because the bell notification is not clicked. If you click the bell notification, you'll get all my new videos when they update. So if I make this video, right then you get the video and it'll say Frontwoods Farmer, new video. So make sure you do that right now. All right, guys, sorry the sink's so dirty. <clears throat> what I do is I start off, I just use a trickle, get the nice, nice and warm. Use hot water. You don't have to be scalding hot. This first step in the process isn't going to do much, but it's going to get a lot of the big stuff off. So all you're going to do, get this degreaser, it ain't going to hurt the handle. See that rust already's coming off. These are sharp, even an old knife, if it doesn't feel sharp, it can still cut you, so always treat it as a sharp knife. Pretty easy, you get your burlo pad, get nice and wet. And the longer you do this with a burlo pad, the more you'll get off. This step you can repeat on the blade multiple times. You notice how much cleaner that's getting. Now, for a finished handle, Brillo pad, you do not want to use. I will go over this unfinished handle lightly just to get some of the grime off, especially around the pins. But again, this will take your finish off your knives too. So if it's not this bad, the Brillo pad, you might want to skip this step on the knife or just the handle. Now you could go about taking this handle apart and cleaning up the tang of the knife. But again, we're just doing a quick restoration, something just really cleaning it up the blade. Now again, you can keep up with the Brillo pad and repeat this step over and over, but now we're gonna go to the sandpaper. We're gonna start off with the 320 grit sandpaper. Normally what I do is I'll have a paint stick and I'll wrap it up in here. You can do that, but I'm gonna show you guys how to restore this knife quickly and without a lot of products. Also could have a little coffee can and that way you don't have to leave your faucet run and just dip it in and out. And what you're doing is you're cleaning the grit. So I'm starting off with a 320, which is a rougher sandpaper than I normally use. But it's gonna take more material off more quickly. And 
And you don't have to sand the blade, the cutting edge. See that, that came off? A little bit of dirt, that's what you want. This is referred to as wet sanding. You do not want to dry sand. See how the knife's already getting, it's getting smoother. It's getting more shiny. You can start to see it again. It's bringing life back to this knife. Then you always be careful of that edge. If you don't have experience doing this, I suggest you work with a professional first. what it'll look like with the 320 ran over it. It's real nice and clean. Now this shore edge, generally I could get these knife blades to look really shiny, almost like a chrome stainless finish. We're not so much going for that. We're gonna have that when we're done a little bit. But you gotta remember, this is actually blacksmith. That's where the blacksmith was hitting the knife with a hammer. That, you wanna show that off. Now we're gonna go over the pins and the handle lightly. The trick here is you want to take off the least amount of material that you can. In this next step, you're not going to notice as much stepping it up to the 400 grit, which is the higher the number, the finer the grit, you have more grit on the paper. And we're just gonna repeat the process. And we're to keep it real nice and wet and watch the edge. And you'll feel the more that you do this, the smoother this will run off. And that's what you're looking for. Again, this knife is a blacksmith knife. It's what's called a hammered finish. It's not going to look like a more modern knife when done. If you do this with a more modern knife, you'll get almost a chrome finish. It'll it'll be a mirror finish. It's not what we're going for with this knife. This is a Thanksgiving carving knife. A farm knife. See all the metal coming off? It's all the dirt and the metal. No, you should feel this getting a lot more smooth now. As you're doing this handle, you can keep getting lighter if you want to take less off. As we step up the grit, it's going to take less off too. Just keep that handle nice and wet. See all the dirt coming out of that handle. And if there's ladders like this, you just want to watch. You don't want to take off the uh, patina or the ladders. Just keep going over it. Next is your 600 grit. And we're using a 3M sandpaper. That's what they had at our local store. Now once you start stepping it up to these 600 grits and 800 and thousands, that's when you want to take more time. That's what's going to get you your perfect finish. Keep these ultra wet. You don't have to push you're just more gliding along the knife edge. Okay. And you can tell from when we started how much cleaner this edge is getting.
same on the handle. That's when the brass will really come out of the pins. You can just see this knife coming back to life now. And the most important steps in your process should be your finishing paper. You're going to want to spend the most time using this paper. It's going to give you your smoothest and brightest finish. And again, for this old farm butcher knife, we're only going with the 800 versus our normal finish to 2 to 3,000 grit. And that's so we can keep it time correct and keep the finish that we want. And this is just like polishing foam. The more you do this, the smoother it'll be, the shinier it'll be. You could always, on a really old knife, not hammered out like this, and you want to get a better mirror finish, you can repeat these processes as many times as you need. And again, not. Uh, Larger grit paper will give you the more smooth mirror finish if that's what you're looking for. I will also show you the care process after we are done because this knife is not stainless, it has a raw finish. And a raw finish knife, in my opinion, cuts the best, but it is not the most maintenance free. And that's it. Next step is the same as our first step. What we're going to do now, lightly wash her off with the sponge. Soap and water, you want to get all the metal off. Sanitary. Okay, guys, getting closer to being done. You want to dry this off thoroughly. See how clean that is. After you dry it off. We're going to let it sit for 15 minutes, make sure it's thoroughly dry, and then I'll show you about the care process. Sorry about the strange view. Had to get this angle in the camera. Our next step in the process, just treating this knife for storage. Um, and we'll do a separate video on sharpening if you guys are interested in that. Just leave a comment down below, like, share my videos. Just going to get some vegetable oil. I normally use olive oil, but with olive oil, I will tell you if you're not using this knife as frequently, which this one we do not plan to just for special occasions and butchering and things like that, uh, the olive oil will get like, uh, it'll get real thick on there and it's, it'd be hard you have to like actually get it off before you use it again. So we're just gonna lightly coat the vegetable oil. And vegetable oil is a little more clear than olive oil, so we won't put as dark finish on the handle. And just get a light coat like that. And this is, gonna really make this knife pop you can see that i know it's hard but it really puts a beautiful finish on this handle i'll show you guys a close-up of the handle and the knife we're all done be careful because the blade like i said still could be sharp and now you're adding oil which will make the knife handle a little bit harder to grip so just do that. Nice like that on the blade. And this will prevent rust. This will seal your handle. And it's just that easy. Now, we've got that done. You get another paper towel. You're going to want to take off as much oil as you can.
more should do it. Every time you use this knife and you wash this knife, this is what you're gonna wanna do. I'm gonna get you guys some more light. Okay, this is our finished product that we have. As you can see, it's a lot more brighter. You can see all the hammer marks. It's ready to cut. Hey guys, I know it's hard to see. This is our finished product. You can look how beautiful this handle material really is. Again, this wood's probably well over 200 years old. It's a 100 year old knife. And the wood had to be from a tree, which uh, could be potentially two, 300 years old, this wood. Could be 150, 120. Beautiful grain. Brass pens. And this was a uh, auction find and come in a box. So I paid a couple dollars for the box. I probably don't even have a quarter in this knife. Beautiful knife. Again, we don't want a mere finish on this knife. This is an old farm butcher knife. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, and always click the bell notification. If you do that, and I get enough feedback on this video, I got a box of old butcher knives from a farmer. It was an estate auction. He was in a home and they were raising money. I have boning knives in here. I have skinning knives, filleting knives, butchering knives. I got two really nice old knife sharpeners. They're all 90% old hickory knives, case knives, PALs. We'll do a video on that if this video gets enough attention. Remember, always be careful. Thanks for watching.